This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Sunday, March the 3rd, 2019. Today is the feast day of St. Catherine Drexel. Born to very rich and very philanthropic parents in Philadelphia, she was on track to be a trophy wife until her stepmother's three-year battle with cancer. She wanted more for her life, and she was wrestling with what to do with that when her father died not long after her stepmother's death and left her and her two sisters just shy of $14 million. That's about $400 million in today's dollars. Catherine and her sisters had lost all their family and were unsure of what came next. Catherine turned to philanthropy, and in particular, she sympathized with Native American Indians. She had read about the Trail of Tears and had visited what would become reservations for Native American Indians all over the U.S., and in 1887, she went to Rome and she met with Pope Leo XIII to request missionaries to staff missions that she would fund to serve the Native American Indians all over the Midwest United States. Soon after, she decided to become a religious sister herself and to devote herself to ministry to Native Americans and the newly freed blacks in the southern United States. She went on to establish 145 missions 12 schools specifically for American Indians and 50 schools for African Americans. She and her order, in cooperation with the Archdiocese of New Orleans and other religious congregations, founded Xavier University in Louisiana, the only historically black Catholic college in the United States. She died in 1955 at the age of 96 and was canonized on October the 1st, 2000 as the second native-born American saint. Today in 1939 in Bombay, Mohandas Gandhi begins a hunger strike in protest of British rule in India. He led a non-violent revolution against the British, earning the folk title Mahatma, which is Sanskrit for high soul. His plans were somewhat short-sighted though, and his dream of religious tolerance was not shared by the Hindu majority or the Islamic majority. The British tried a system of partition, establishing two nations, India for the Hindus and Pakistan for the Muslims. But no matter where the lines were drawn, Hindus, Sikhs, and Muslims were spread all over. And those in areas of Muslim rule faced persecution and execution. And the same was true of those folks who lived in areas of Hindu rule. Despite his lack of success, Gandhi was seen and is seen now as an icon of hope and the value of non-violent protest. Finally today in 1923, Time Magazine published issue number one under the direction of editor Henry Luce as the first weekly news magazine in the United States. They wanted a magazine that was brief and could be read in about an hour. And the first slogan was, take time, it's brief. Luce co-founded the magazine with Britton Hayden who was more carefree and wanted the magazine to have some levity. He insisted that there be coverage of celebrities and pop culture. As Luce found his stride as a magazine man, he settled on a format which would tell the news through individual people. And so most of the covers of Time magazine feature one individual as a kind of lens through which to see significant news of the week. Luce went on to become a true magnate of magazines in the United States. He eventually owned or had major stake in startups like Fortune Magazine, Life Magazine, and Sports Illustrated. Today, Time Magazine has the world's largest circulation for a weekly news magazine in the world. And today in 1923, they sold issue number one. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.